everyone and welcome back to another video. So the topic for today's video is to introduce you into using loops. So loops give us the ability to, pretty much as it says, is to define a range uh, or a number of rows or columns and to loop through each one of those cells within that range and perform um, a calculation or obviously insert a value. Um, as this is the first introduction, uh, this video might be shorter than normal uh, and obviously might be quite uh, basic in its actual output, but I wanted to start this next look at loops obviously with something really basic to help you get the grips of it uh, before we move into more advanced uses of such um, functionality. So the first thing we're going to do, well not the first thing, but what we'll be doing is using our loop to automatically public, um, populate the values within column A for a de defined number of rows. Uh, and the code is really simple, it's very straightforward on how to do this, uh, so it's going to be a great one for you to learn and have um, under your, or in your pocket, shall we say. So the first thing we're going to do, again, we've got our module here ready to go, and we're just going to enter our subroutine straight away. So our sub, we're going to call this, uh, get rid of the, calculate, um, the uh, capitals, sub equals simple, simple loop, uh, do that. And then we'll come down. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to define a, a, a variable um, for the letter i, and that's going to be an integer. And this integer uh, or variable is going to then ref refer to the row number of our Excel worksheet. So we'll do dim uh, i as integer. And it's nice and easy to remember, i for integer, and obviously that's a number. And then the next thing we're going to do is say for i equals one to six. So what this means is our value of i is going to start at the number one and it's going to iterate all the way up until it reaches this value of six. Um, so before I go in any more on that, I'm going to enter the rest of the code and then we can talk through it and hopefully that makes more sense. On a new line, I'm just now going to define what code is going to happen within this loop. So we're going to refer to sheet, or sheet should I say, and that is going to be sheet number one, and you can see that's just the, the sheet number that we're using here today. Close brackets, and then I'm going to refer to our cell range or cell reference, so we're going to use cells, uh, open our bracket. So the first thing, well, when we're using cells, obviously we have to put in these two pieces of information. The first part is going to be the row reference. So say if we wanted to refer to uh, cell A1, it's going to be the first row within the first column of our sheet. So that's what we refer to to uh, cell A1. If we wanted to refer to cell B1, obviously it's still the first row in our sheet, but it's now going to be the second column. And likewise, if we now wanted to refer to row two of column A, we enter in here row two of the first column, close brackets, and that's referring to that cell. Because we're going to be using this loop and it's going to be dynamically going through each of these numbers, so starting at one, or row one you could say, all the way to six, we're actually going to be entering our variable into the row reference. So we've got i there, comma, and obviously we want to be in this first column of column a, so it's going to enter the number one, close brackets, dot value, and we'll just say that equals to the value of 100, the number 100. On the new row, I'm then going to just do enter next i. And then this is our, well, the entirety of our code we're going to be using. So the first part we've got here is we've defined i, the letter i, as an integer, so a whole number. And then what's going to happen is for i equals 1 to 6, so it's going to start at the number 1. So as it starts its existence when it does this loop, i equals 1. It'll then run this code, so it'll say, okay, for this sheets and cells i1, so it'll look and say, okay, well, i is currently where, um, equal to the number one, so it'll be the, the same as having the number one here, which is going to be this first cell. And what it's going to do, once it's identified that cell, it's going to change the value to 100, so it'll enter the 100 here. Once it's done that code, it'll then go to next i, and in essence, in the most simplest terms what's happening, it's actually now going to add one to our existing i. So it, one i, which was one, is now going to become two. And then what will happen is the sheet, the code will then execute again. So sheets, sheet one, cells, 
and i is now equal to two so it'll now reference our second row within that first column and the value be done to 100. this will keep performing all the way until it gets to row six because we only want to go up to the number six so as soon as i is equal to six it will perform this code but there is no i thereafter so there's no next i because we've reached the maximum and then it will exit the code so I think the only thing for me to do is to run this code and hopefully that maybe sort of a bit mumbled explanation makes sense and you can see how it works. Uh, so let's just change this yeah, and then leave it at six. So if I now run this code, so as you can see, it's the code is executed and it's run through each of those rows within our range. So it's obviously gone up to number six, so you can see our sixth row and entered the value 100. And I've just now thought of a simpler way of demonstrating this. So I'm just gonna clear this and what I'm going to do is add a break to this next I part of our code. And you do that simply by clicking just to the left there on the side. You can see it's then been highlighted with this circle to the left. Uh, and what this is going to allow us to do is all, the code will execute until it gets to this pause line. And then it will momentarily pause so we can see what's happened within the code. So if I was just to run this, so I'll do F5. You can see what's happened is we're currently to start with I is equal to 1. So it's going to replace i within our cell reference here. As you can see, I hover over it, i is currently equal to 1. Therefore, it's going to refer to the first cell within the first row of our sheet and enter the value of 100. If I now hit F5 again, you can see our code will continue. But this time, i, if I can hover over it correctly as I did before, yeah, there you go, i is now equal to 2. So what it's going to do is refer to the second row within the first column and in turn make that value equal to 100 and so on as we go through this. So you can see it's now gone, i is now equal to 3 as it's passed through that next i aspect. Once again, you can see i is now 4, so it's therefore referring to the fourth row. One more time, it's done the fifth and lastly, it's now gone to 6. And this time, if I now execute the once again, you can see that it's actually exited the code because there's no more um, code to go through because we've reached our maximum of six, therefore it's exited the function. And this code is really beneficial and helpful when we're sort of going through and com either comparing or wanting to perform calculations or references against a lot of data. All we need to simply do if you want to go further than six is we can change this number to 10, hit F5, and you can see it'll go down to the value of 10. Alternatively, if you wanted to change this to 150, again, we can run this code and it'll automatically go through each row in our reference and populate that value to 150 as well. So again, hopefully that video um, was seemed quite straightforward and logical and has given you a basis to actually work on and give yourself something to try and play around with. Uh, as we go further, and I know I keep saying this in videos, but we will be getting onto these very soon, I assure you is when we get into more um, complicated and more sort of technical logic, you'll really see the benefit of using these loops to, to work with. Also, another benefit of, uh, again, keeping your interest with using loops is once you're working with a lot of data, and I'm talking like a, a large number of rows of data, um, if you're performing normal Excel calculations, obviously that can have quite a burden on your file and take up quite a lot of memory and time to perform those calculations. Whereas if you're using your calculation in VBE or VBA and you combine that with a loop to perform for each applicable row, obviously that is a real uh, sort of lifesaver in some senses and a lot quicker for performing the complex calculations as well. So I sort of digress there a bit, but I was trying to give you a bit more insight into the real sort of benefit and the uses that these loop functions will have later in your Excel coding. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. Uh, if you did, as always, please do give the video a like. If it's your first time or you've watched our videos before and you've not already subscribed to the channel, please do hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell notification button as well uh, so you're notified of all of our videos as they come out. As always, any questions do, please just drop a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.